We are nearing the top of Mount Purgatory, getting closer to the earthly paradise. There, Dante will once again see his beloved Beatrice and make his confession to her. Here, on the terrace of the gluttonous, walking behind Virgil and Statius, Dante hears a voice giving examples of moderation, of fasting. Where is the voice coming from? Dante searches for its source. He peers intently, curiously, into the green boughs of the tree, and he's gently chided by Virgil, his more than father. I here use Mandelbaum's translation. Virgil reminds Dante that his time can be used more fruitfully. He should rather attend to the words of the penitential, Psalm 51. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. And to the souls who are singing it, each one is emaciated from fasting. They pause to look at Dante like pensive pilgrims. Dante sees their wide, sunken eyes, and in each face he discerns the word Olmo, man, which is to say, Dante discerns God's image in each soul he meets. I especially love this canto because I believe it uncovers a key theological dimension of purgatory. That is, penitential suffering, such as the fasting these souls undergo, must be understood in the light of Christ. But before I discuss that, I'd like to emphasize a theme which prepares for it, one which you're likely very familiar with, the spirit of community that everywhere pervades Mount Purgatory and the friendships that animate that community. Here, Dante meets his old buddy from Florence, Forese Donati. He died about four years earlier. Dante is amazed that he's made it up so far, up so far up Mount Purgatory in such a short time. Forese credits his wife, Nella, her sighs, her prayers have helped to set him free. In cooperation with divine grace, her prayers for her dead husband have helped bring him closer to heaven, where everyone's perfectly free. As Forese's saintly sister, Picarda, will say in Canto Three of Paradiso, in God's will is our peace. Canto 23 of Purgatorio affirms the goodness of married love, the goodness of friendship, it suggests the way friends can hold each other accountable, help them conform more fully to God's will. Back in the day when Dante and Ferese were young poets, they'd compete with each other, writing poems as put-downs. Toward the end of the canto, Dante remembers this rather degrading practice, and he says to Ferese, if you should call to mind what you were with me and I with you, remembering now will be heavy. Back then, he and his friend hadn't written poems that sought to edify or build up. Instead, they played the dozens, composing clever bass rhymes in which they insulted each other and their marriages. And now Dante remembers it all with remorse. As he has in the past, he participates in the penitential spirit of the community. And Ferese, far more mature, foresees and affirms the prophetic dimension that Dante has as a poet. He exhorts Dante not to hide from his readers the human corruption he's witnessed in Florence. Now we get to the meaning of purgative suffering. This is clarified in the center of the canto. When Dante asks, why are you all so withered? Ferese explains, we freely joined our pain, our hunger, our thirst, to that of Christ. In this way, they participate in Christ's salvific suffering on the cross. Here are Ferese's words. I speak of pain, but I should speak of solace, for we are guided to those trees by the same longing that had guided Christ when he'd come to free us through the blood he shed, and in his joyousness called out Eli. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. How could Christ's cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, have been joyous? At that awful moment, Christ 
is praying Psalm 22. And he knows that he's fulfilling his calling. His death and resurrection restore our human freedom. So too, Ferese and his fellow souls fulfill their calling to repent. By analogy, they participate in Christ's redemptive suffering. As they yearn for the luscious fruit of the tree that's before them, they think of another tree, the tree that is the cross of Christ. Christ's cross becomes the true tree of life, the source of their joy. The cross as the tree of life is an image strikingly portrayed in the mosaic apse of San Clemente Church in Rome, one that Dante probably knew. And it's an image that suggests the continuing relevance of purgatory for Dante's fellow pilgrims. Us readers who seek in purgatorio an allegory for their own ordinary lives in which suffering is inevitable. In purgatory, penitential suffering is embraced willingly. Its source is the graced gift of human freedom and a person's desire to restore that freedom when it's been weakened by the habit of sin just two cantos earlier, we witnessed this restoration of freedom in the story of Statius. He explained the earthquake. He said, the earth only trembles here when some soul feels it's cleansed, when it feels fully free. A reading of Purgatorio focused upon willing, penitential, participatory suffering counters any mistaken notion of Purgatory as a place of divine penal bookkeeping. One might see the place more like a contemplative, if strenuous, spa. Reading this canto, we can better understand what C.S. Lewis meant when he wrote, our souls demand purgatory, don't they? It also helps us understand what contemporary philosopher Charles Taylor means when he claims that we have to struggle to recover a sense of what the incarnation means. This includes an understanding that our own suffering can participate in the suffering of Christ. Grounded in a gracious, divine initiative, and here I use Taylor's words, persons are free to willingly accept or willfully reject the call to be free. And in this way, human suffering may become associated with Christ's act, become a locus of renewed contact with God, an act which heals the world. The suffering is given a transformative effect by being offered to God. Recall Canto 11 at the beginning of the climb to Mount Purgatory, the Terrace of the Proud, when they pray the Our Father and as they do, they offer their wills in sacrifice to God. Their example fosters the goodwill of Dante and his fellow pilgrim readers. Thank you.